Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Coding Decoded. I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanjay Rodeja. I'm working as technical architect at Adobe, and here I present weekly contest 293. The question that we are doing is maximum consecutive floors without special floors in it. So here in this question, we are given a building. We are also told the bottom index of the floor of the building. We are also told the topmost index of the floor of the building. We are also given special floors that are acting as the relaxing floors. We are all we are given their indexes. What we need to do, we need to return the maximum number of consecutive floors without any special floors in between them. For example, here the bottom index is two, top index is nine, and special floors are at four and six. So the first contender for the answer becomes two comma three. The size of uh, this range is two. Next contender becomes five, followed by the third contender which is seven, eight, and nine. So the size of the last contender is the maximum one. Therefore, it becomes the answer. We'll be exactly following the same same steps as I just talked here by the presentation. I'll be explaining you the algorithm to go about it. So let's quickly hop onto it. Lead code double two four seven four maximum consecutive floors without special floors. It's a medium level question on lead code. However, I can read this question under easy category. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on Telegram or Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated in the description. Now let's get started. I have slightly changed the example so that you get a good hold of the concept. The bottom one is two, the top one is fifteen, and special fold special floors are at four, six, and nine. So what we are gonna do? We'll create few simple variables. The first one is the start, the second one is the end, and uh, the third one is the answer. So right now the answer variable happens to be zero, and start one would point to two because start is here. And now we'll be we interested in calculating the end pointer for the first iteration that we see. So where would the end pointer lie? It will lie at uh, four, the first index in our special array. So four becomes our end pointer. So the first contender that we have turns out to be four minus two. Four minus two is two. So two happens to be greater in value than our answer variable. So this gets updated to two. Along with this, we should be updating a start pointer for the next iteration to happen. So start gets updated to four plus one, which is five. And where will end point to? End will now point to six. So this gets updated to six. Let's calculate the next contender. Six minus one, six minus five is one. So uh, the next contender for the answer becomes one. So out of one and two, which one is a greater one? Two is a greater one. So the answer remains as it is. Along with this, what should we should be updating? We should be updating the start pointer. So the start pointer gets updated to seven. Six plus one is seven. And where will end pointer be updated to? End pointer will be updated to nine. So let's calculate the next contender. Nine minus seven gives you two. So out of two and two, which one is the greater one? Two is already both are same. So answer will not be updated. Let Let's continue the process. Now you see that we have exhausted the special array and there are no more elements left. However, there is one more corner case that we should address. What is that corner case? Let's talk about that. So we should also consider the last contender would be, which would be equal to top minus special last special index. What is the last special index? It is nine. So top minus nine gives you a six. So six becomes another contender for the answer out of six and ans. Which one is a greater value? Six is a greater value. As a result of which, this gets updated to six, and it is actually in sync with our expectation because you can see that starting from nine up till fifteen, how many floors are there? We have six floors: nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are those floors: ten, eleven, twelve. 13 14 15 and this correctly represents the result which is in sync with our expectation to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section and finalize the algo the first thing that i have done is to sort my special uh, special array so that i i see all the elements in sorted order next i go ahead and create the start index other one is then acting as my end index the last one is acting as my answer variable that will store the answer I iterate over my uh, special array. I extract the special folder index, which would be special at the ith index, 
and I calculate the difference between the special Fourier index minus start. Once I have that diff, I compare it with my answer variable ANS equals to mass rod max ANS comma diff. And along with this, I am updating my start to special folder index plus one. So this is very important. Once I'm done with this, I have to consider another corner case, which is end minus the last value at in my special array. So I compare the answer with this value and I select the maximum one. Once I'm done with this, I return the ANS value. So let's try this up. Accepted. The time complexity of this approach is of order of n log n. Why n log n? because we are sorting the special array had this not been there it would have been equal to order of n and the space complexity is constant time we are not using anything extra with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll i'll see you in some time with the rest of the questions